Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, Pennsylvania, and I am here each week at this time on this station to bring you, the landowner, the information you need regarding natural gas development here in Pennsylvania. And as always, and of course, I, Doug Clark, do not, and I think if you listen to the show, you may pick this up, I do not and I will not represent gas or pipeline companies. I never have and I never ever will. I have been doing this show since August of 2010. I've been doing this weekly show since August of 2010. And so I'm going to tell you, you can go to the website to pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com, get there, listen to the shows, get information, get news. But I'll tell you, you can play time and time again me stating, I have not, I do not, and I will not work for gas companies. Never have, never will, never, ever. Don't care if they pull a Brinks truck up to my office. It's not going to happen. We need people fighting for you the Pennsylvania landowner. They got an army of people fighting for them, and we don't. And that's what we need to do. We need to raise the bar, information, education, and turn this around and get the best possible deal, deals, fair deals, fair deals. And so that's what I'm committed to, and that's what I'm going to stay committed to as long as I possibly can. So Look out, companies, because I do have my blood pressure pills regulated now, and I'm ready to go. And I'm going to have some fun today. I'm going to tell you this. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to have some fun today. And this wasn't planned, but you know what? I'm feeling it today. So let's have some fun today. Here's the deal. This is, as always, the radio show is not specific advice for any person. Never, ever specific advice. The only, I guess, in the contrast, in contrast, though, uh, to contradict that, my actually, I do have one thing of specific advice, and that is for you as an individual landowner, royalty owner, or property owner, if you are presented with any contract, any agreement, I don't care, a map to initial, I am telling you, and my specific advice as strong as I can offer it, is go to an attorney who knows what they're doing, do a review and consultation. You'll hear me say this, put the pen down and pick up the phone. Find out from somebody working for you, what is this about? What is my leverage? What are my options? We have to stop signing these agreements. We gotta stop just simply signing these agreements. And not to be commercial, but as an example, what I do all the time is have reviews and consultations with people who have property or gas rights all across Pennsylvania, regardless of location of the property and regardless of the location of the individual. I do reviews and consultations all the time, even something as, hey, they want me to sign this map. So what do you do? You send me the map and you send me the underlying agreement. Maybe it's a gas lease or a pipeline agreement. I look at everything, I study everything, I get my opinions together, and then we either have an in-person meeting or we do it by a conference call and we call those reviews and consultations where I will explain to the client, what is your leverage? What are your options? What are the company's rights? How can you potentially negotiate? Is this negotiable? Can you simply decline? That's the information that you need. And if you can negotiate, what type of negotiations and terms and additions can you achieve in the negotiation process? That's what we're looking at. That generally takes one to two hours. Generally takes one to two hours. Just this past week, example, person with a pipeline agreement, $25,000 offer within a month, a hundred thousand plus offer for a pipeline. This happens quite frankly, all the time. It doesn't always happen in every case, but there are thousands of pipeline agreements out there. So in my experience, I have seen many, many times where 
offers are 20, 50,000 in or tripled, quadrupled or even more. And so many times it starts with the review and consultation. Then also, if you do the review and consultation and you don't have the leverage, and I say, look, you're in a situation where when we evaluate everything we can and all the information we have, you do not have a strong negotiation position. Now, I hesitate to say that on the radio because I don't want people to think because that's the number one problem. So please listen to this one. The number one problem that people have is they are not appreciating or understanding their negotiation leverage and what they can do in their current situation. Then they rely on the landman who, as we all know, works for the company, not you, the landowner. And then they enter into an agreement without ever knowing or understanding their leverage, their ability to decline, their ability to negotiate, or their ability to improve the document. That's the number one problem. And that's why I say stop signing. Put down the pen, pick up the phone. Because if this gentleman, and it, there's so many cases like this, if they call and, or they didn't call and they just signed an agreement, many, many people lose out on 20, 50, 100,000, and literally hundreds of thousands of dollars, many times. Now, again, if your negotiation leverage is very small, doesn't exist, we talk about what your leverage is, what the problems are, what the obstacles are, what you can do still in your situation. And then you have the tools and information to understand your position and to maximize your position. And the worst possible thing that can happen, the worst possible thing that can happen is you do a review and consultation, you spend an hour or two of time and you pay an hour or two of legal fees and you have information, you have knowledge and you understand and you decide that you're going to move forward or decline. That's the worst thing that can happen. <laughs> Think about it. The worst thing that can happen is that you can be informed in typically two hours or less by somebody working for you who's always worked for landowners, who has never and will never work for gas or pipeline companies. I, in my opinion, oh, here we go, let's do it. Opinion, opinion, opinion. I can't work for anyone who I feel, now this is my opinion, I can't stress this enough, who I feel is taking advantage of somebody else, taking advantage of the lack of information, the lack of education on this subject, not the lack of education of the individual. I represent doctors, businessmen, all kinds of people. I represent landmen in matters of their own affairs in the past. I don't currently, but I have. So it's not about that any individual isn't that they're taking advantage of a lack of education of an individual. It's taking advantage of the lack of education on this subject. So we need to educate everybody on the oil and gas subject. And that's what the radio show is. General information, get you thinking, be aware of things because people are still just signing, signing, signing and getting taken advantage of, in my opinion, every single day. And all I can do is continue to do the radio show, to do the best I can, to work as hard as I can, to try to change that. And I'm going to keep doing that. But my point is, if you have any of these documents and you're just signing or you're listening to the landman who works for the company to tell you what your options are, think about that. Think about entering into a commercial industrial contract with a Fortune 500 company who has all kinds of lawyers, who have private lawyers that they hire, who have all these landmen, private contractors, internal organization, and you are going to just sign an agreement because they tell you, this is all we pay. This is all we pay. <laughs> God, does that drive me crazy? This is all we pay. I can't tell you how many times I've had people tell me, landmen, well, this is all we pay. Well, I absolutely know because I have a drawer sitting beside me with closed files where I've had clients paid more than what you're telling me. That's all you've paid. 
You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus, where I'm going to give you uh, my personal opinion. We're not going to give specific legal advice, and we're going to have some fun today because we're going to offer a lot of opinion. And I got to tell you, it's feeling pretty good, so I'm going to keep it up. I'm going to keep it up and we'll have some fun. Again, it's going to be a highly opinionated show. It's not legal advice. These are my opinions. And I certainly, you know, I mean, I could be wrong, but anyone who has an opinion believes in that opinion uh, because it's their opinion. So in my opinion, I believe that we see landowners all across Pennsylvania being taken advantage of every single day. And so I struggle when I think, why does that occur? Why is that occurring? And it's occurring you know, and again, I think about these things a lot. Why is that occurring and what can I do to try to prevent that or change that? And even if the landowner doesn't call me, and I'd love them to because I want to help everybody I can, but even if they don't call me, how can I even encourage them to call someone else? I am extremely fortunate in my position in life and what I do. I love what I do and I love that I get to help people and there is no doubt this is how I make my living but I love it. And our clients go check out the websites, read the testimonials. This is a gift that's been given to me to help people. So if I can't, if I can't get people to call me to get help from someone who knows what I think I know what I'm doing, then call someone else that does, but we can't listen to the other side. Tell us that we should be signing a commercial industrial contract. How can we do that? We know that there are thousands of people who are out there who say that, and I'm not, this isn't an exaggeration, thousands that say, I was promised when I saw my gas lease that I would have no deductions of my, or from my royalties. Then when I started getting royalties, 25, 50%, 75, and in rare cases, rare, 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 100% of their royalties were taken by deductions. But that's, that's rare. So let's say 25, 50%. I was promised, I was told this meant no deductions. By who? The land man. And who do they work for? Clearly not you. They work for the company. So you were told that. You believed that. You signed an agreement. Then you get deductions. So... That is a major boy who just cried wolf. So when they tell you something and you believe it and you got burned by it, how many times does the company need or the boy need to cry wolf? Well, to me, I want to say the classic fool me once, shame on me. And that's what you have. Maybe you got fooled. I'm not saying there should be shame on you by any means, but maybe you got fooled once, but we can't let them fool us again. And as I say often, even if you weren't fooled, and I'm going to tell you, most of the people feel that they were fooled that I talk to, the unrepresented people. So even if you feel that you weren't fooled, you got to know that many, many other people have been. And when I talk about these different agreements and I pull out agreements, and we run through agreements, and we do the show each week, run through all these different agreements. It's the show people, these tricks and loopholes the royalty deductions, just because they are so, they're just so severe and the amount of money is literally into the tens and to the hundreds of millions of dollars when you look at it combined. So that's a real easy issue to point to. But there are so many other issues. And that's why I point out in these contracts, all of these different loopholes, ways that are written to benefit the companies, ways where you think today, oh, they're just going to put one pipeline on the property. Everything's going to be great. And now they're finally going to pump gas. When in reality, reality is they can put as many pipelines as they want. They can put above ground facilities on the property. And many times I get to call years later after somebody signed a pipeline right away agreement when the land man company tells them, hey, we're going to put one line in and this, everything is great. Then they call me when they have above ground facilities on the property, when there's multiple lines being installed, when they have all these problems and they say, well, the land man told me such and such, there'd be one line and that's it. Nothing above ground. 
Well, read the agreement. So when I read those sections that talk about that no person, essentially paraphrasing here, that no individual making statements to you, the landowner, are part of this contract and no individual landman making statements to you about this type of agreement or, pro or plans for the property, that none of those statements are binding and unless it's written in the agreement, that's what's binding, what's written in the agreement. So any statement of, we're going to put one line in, we're going to do it next year, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do this. And then they go and they put four lines in. They put them in at different times. So you go through this production activity two different times, three different times. Then they put things above ground. Then they fence what they put above ground. Then they put a roadway on the property. Then they're driving across the property. And you're saying, whoa, 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 wait a second, wait a second. What the heck are you doing? The landman told me one pipeline, one pipeline only. Well, as is typically the case, try to find that landman now. They're probably in some other area, maybe even another state, seeking and trying to acquire pipelines in other areas. They're gone because they were independent contractors working for the company. My opinion, my opinion, very smart, my opinion, the company gets to distance themselves from these guys and ladies. Oh, yeah, well, oh, well, you know, it's a shame they shouldn't have said that to you. Oh, 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 oh yeah, but look at the contract. The contract says we can put as many lines as we want. The contract says we can put above ground facilities on the property if we want it. The contract says we can put a roadway. And the contract says that nothing the land man said was binding unless it was written into this contract. And so they say, well, you shouldn't have signed the contract. And then they say, well, if you didn't understand it, you should have got a lawyer. But how many times when the landman comes out and hands you the contract says, hey, look, you should really call a lawyer because you have a lot of leverage here. You should really call a lawyer because when I tell you that I can, the, the company only can put one line or is only going to put one line in, I should rephrase that. When the company says we're only going to put one, one line in, you know what, landman or landowner, you, sh you better call a lawyer because there's a lot of loopholes and a lot of things here that the company can do that I'm not telling you about. <laughs> Think about that. No, that isn't happening. No. So what are you left with? You're left with the contract you signed. And if you didn't get help and you just relied on them, you probably are exposed. Now, it doesn't always happen that there are problems, but gosh, you're exposed to them. So remember this, because this is going to come real relevant in the next section. The company says to you, hey, you signed a contract. The terms of the contract allow us to do this activity. You signed the contract. We have the contractual rights. We are going to do this activity. Sorry, but you shouldn't have signed a contract if you didn't want to agree to it. So keep that in mind because I love what I'm going to tell you next. I am so tired of these companies operating on a one-way street. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that when I get back. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can always give us a call, and I hope you do. Learn about reviews, consultations, 570-307-0702, 570-307-0702, regardless of your location. If location is an issue, we'll talk about it. But we do these reviews, consultations by phone all the time, and it works so well. So I really encourage you, give us a call and see if we can help you. Royalty issues, unitization issues, breach of contracts, any type of agreement. Call, call, call. Put down the pen, pick up the phone. Let's see if we can help you. 570-307-0702. I'll be right back after this break. Stay tuned because we're going to have fun today. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, I'm here each and every week at this time on this station to bring you, the landowner, the information you need regarding natural gas development. You can always call the office, and I hope you do, 570-307-0702. Any oil and gas related issue. If you have a gas lease, you need a review, consultation, negotiation. We can start review consultation and see where it goes from there. Same thing with pipeline right of way agreements. I have clients all across and have had clients all across Pennsylvania gas producing regions. 
So don't worry about distance. Give us a call and see if it works for you. I have, I've represented clients in their 90s um, who live in the western side of the state um, who aren't able to travel out to meet with me, and it's worked very, very well. So I just really encourage you, don't let that distance be a concern because I know it is for many people, but our experience has been is that very few times, very few times has, has distance been an obstacle. And, you know, just actually filing a complaint um, this past week or this coming week, excuse me, um, for a case in Armstrong County, my home county where I grew up. So, um, you know, look, distance is not a problem in virtually any case. Um, and we're prepared and anticipate, I anticipate uh, appearing and proceeding in Armstrong County Court. So that, again, if you have a breach or you have a gas lease issue, pipeline issue, potential lawsuit issue, want to hear from you about that as well. It doesn't mean you need to file a lawsuit, but if you feel that you have a case, you have a breach, you feel your lease is terminated, give us a call and see if we can maybe help you. Again, 570-307-0702. Now for my little bit of a weekly reminder, a couple points. One. If you have a multi-unit well consent request, Cabot is a very common company giving people or sending people these multi-unit well consent requests where they're asking the drill wells that are going to go through multiple production units, multiple units. I am telling you, I would highly recommend you give my office a call and see if we can help you. I would highly recommend that you call the office and do a review and consultation. They usually take about an hour, usually. So think about that. I, I personally think that I can give you value. I am very confident, in my opinion, that I can give you value. I really would encourage you to give the office a call and consider a review and consultation, which again, usually takes about an hour combined with everything, usually about an hour. So you can find out what your rights are, what this means, what you might be able to do, what you might not be able to do, and then get a plan and go forward. But I really, I can't tell you enough how much I encourage you. Give my office a call, the Clark Law Firm, 570-307-307. 0702. I'm working on a lot of these and I really would like to hear from you. If you have a multi-unit well consent request, I think I can help you. I really encourage you to call. Next point, Tioga County landowners, Sweppy, some people call shell, vertical wells where they've drilled them and they've capped them and they've held you in shut in for eight years or more I really want to hear from you. I believe what Sweppy is doing, my opinion, what they are doing is totally outrageous. Outrageous. That's my opinion. And we need to do something about it. It's not right and it shouldn't be allowed to continue. And I promise you that I'm going to do what I can to stop this. And so what I want to do, though, is we need to hear from I need to hear from the right people so we can do something about it. Now, I don't mean when I say right people, people who I think we can advance claims and cases against Sweppy to terminate these leases. In my opinion, it's just not right. You didn't enter into a gas lease in 2005, 2000, 2001, 2003, any other time in the 2000s, the mid 2000s thinking that in 2018 there'd be no pipelines connected to your well that you would never see a royalty payment and you would just year after year receive a shut-in payment of five dollars typically per acre wasn't what you thought but that's what you get that wasn't the intention of the contract and if we don't do anything about this they're going to sit there and do it time and time and time and time again so good news bad news the longer you're shut in, the better chance you have to do something about it. However, you've been shut in for a long time. If you've only been shut in for five years or less, my personal opinion, I don't think that those are very strong claims yet. But when you start getting into seven years, I think it becomes very interesting. But when you get into eight years or more, 
I want to hear about that and I want to review that lease. I want to look at it and want to talk about your situation and bringing a claim to stop this. We need to stop this. And so if you're in that situation, I really encourage you, call the office. Let's see if we can help you. 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. The other thing I want to make sure everyone knows, if you're sending, if you're calling the office about you being shut in because of especially a vertical or even a horizontal well, eight years or more in Tioga County with Sweppy. If you call, what we're going to do is, is we will send, I would ask that you send in your lease. We'll look up the drilling records and there's no charge for the evaluation of, do we think that we have a claim that we can bring to you on your behalf? So for those people, I want to make sure that you understand you have nothing to lose. You get a free evaluation from me to say whether I think that this is a claim that certainly I would be interested in bringing. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to bring a claim. You can take my thoughts and throw them out the window. Or you might say, you know what? I want to do something about it. But that's your choice, and that's always your choice. I'm going to tell you I want to do something about it, and I'm going to do something about it. And we're in the process of doing something about it. Okay, so I want to hear from people. The more we hear from, the more we can potentially do. And I want to hear from you. And I don't want people to fear, oh, boy, you know, what's this going to cost? No, the evaluation on these vertical wells being held in for eight years or more, there is no charge for that. It's a free evaluation. And then we can talk about is there a claim to bring and are you interested in bringing it? And if you're not, that's OK. I'm going to tell you this from my office. We don't pressure people. I don't pressure anybody. I offer my best advice, my best recommendations, and allow the client to make their choice. There's no pressure. So if you don't, if we say, wow, you have a great claim and you don't want to bring it, that's, you know, I wish you would, but that's okay. That's your decision. All right. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can join me each and every week at this time on this station. You can call the office for any type of representation, the multi unit well consents the shut-in in Tioga County, just to name a couple, 570-307-0702. That's 570-307-0702. Okay, let's get back to having some fun. I'm going to offer you some more of my opinions. This isn't specific legal advice. These are my opinions, which certainly I believe in. doesn't necessarily mean they're right, but it's something or they're things that I believe in. So just resetting for those who are just joining us briefly, we talked in the first segment about that these companies think that this whole process and this whole world is a one-way street and they're going in that one direction and that they get all the benefits, they get all the positives, and you're there at the end to get whatever you're fortunate enough to get. So I gave the example earlier where landowner meets with the landman who works through the company, not the landowner, and says, hey, yeah, we're going to put one line in. We're going to put it in next year. We're going to make you rich. There'll be nothing above ground. Everything is great. Yeah, you've been waiting for a while, but there was market conditions and this and this and that. Uh, but now's the time. We're going to make you all this money. Here, sign this agreement. You as a frustrated landowner said, boy, I thought I was going to get royalties before this. I was told I was going to be a millionaire when I signed my gas lease. I don't have a million dollars. I haven't received a dime yet in royalties. And now here's my ticket out, the pipeline right-of-way agreement. Well, first off, I hope we see pro we, we see the problems with that. But I don't want to focus too much on the fact that here you have the double whammy again where – give you a bad pipeline, or I'm sorry, give you a bad lease agreement, manipulate the lease agreement, hold on to the lease agreement, make you unbelievably frustrated because you thought you were going to be a millionaire, and now hit you over the head again and give you a crappy pipeline agreement for no money, hardly, way below market value, and promise you now's the time you're going to get rich. Now's the time. Forget everything else. Forget all the other statements. So are you telling me that when the landman told me before, what he told me before wasn't real, wasn't true? Is that what you're saying? Well, anyway, let me, I don't want to go too far down that part, but just remember, you were told all these things 10 years ago, 
and they didn't occur. And now you're told new things by a new face, but the person holds the same occupation this time though, for a pipeline company and not for a gas company. And now you're going to believe them. Now's the time to believe them after you believed them before and you were very disappointed in the results, but now's the time to believe them because they've created a situation where you were so frustrated that you thought you were going to be rich. You thought you were going to be rich a while ago. And now here you are and they say, oh, here's the golden ticket, the pipeline right of way agreement. So here, hurry up and sign and we're going to make you rich. Well, as a lot of people out there know, well, that hasn't quite worked out that way either. But you're frustrated. So you say, all right, I'm going to sign this pipeline right away agreement because now I'm finally going to get royalties. This is, this is what I've been waiting for. Now I'm going to get royalties, so I'm going to sign this pipeline right away agreement. So you pick up the pen, which you shouldn't do. You should be picking up the phone, and you sign the pipeline right of way agreement. Then my example was the Lama said, hey, we're going to put one line in. We're going to do it next year, nothing above ground, and here's your ticket. You're going to get royalties. You're going to be rich. Well, here it comes. Next year, let's say nothing even happens. Then the following year, they put two pipelines in and put an above ground facility or several on your property. Then a couple years later, they come back and they put more pipelines in, all of which you we're told wasn't going to occur. You were told there were going to be one pipeline only and they're digging up the property there. You have facilities above ground. It's an eyesore. It's in the middle of your field. You got all these different problems to the point where you say to the company, you know, I was told this, or you call, you call me and we talk on, you say, you know, I'm so frustrated. They told me one line here. They are again in the property, multiple lines. They put a road on my property. They put above ground facilities. They fenced the above ground facilities in the middle of my field. What in the heck? I was told there was going to be one pipeline. You talk to the company company says, well, you signed the agreement. You signed the agreement and the agreement allows unlimited pipelines. It allows access roads. It allows above ground facilities. It allows multiple pipelines. You signed the agreement. Well, the land man told me it would only be one pipeline. Well, if you read this language in your pipeline agreement, it says that nothing the land man says is binding unless it's written into the pipeline right of way agreement. Well, that's a good deal for them, isn't it? So they say, you signed the agreement, nothing the landman said it was binding. And then they said, well, you could have went to an attorney and had it reviewed, but you elected not to. Well, maybe the landman, I'm not saying you didn't, maybe the landman said, ah, you don't need an attorney, just hurry up and sign this. If anyone's telling you, you don't need an attorney, that should be a sign that you better pick up the phone and at least do a review and consultation. You, you need to do that. You need to do that. That's some specific advice there. So the company says, too bad. You signed the agreement. You signed the agreement. Agreement allows this. You didn't get an attorney. You signed the agreement and nothing the land man says to you is binding unless it's written in a document. And that's where you're left. And what can you do about it? In virtually every case, not a dang thing, nothing, nothing. So it's a, it's a contract that you signed to that you signed and you're bound to buy it. And in my opinion, and I'm sorry to say this, I don't have an objection to that. I don't like how it occurred. And that's why I do the show. And that's why we do what we do to try to stop this from occurring. But it's true that you had the ability to get assistance from someone working for you, not somebody working for them. And you didn't do it and you signed and the state of the law is that you're bound by that contract in virtually all cases. So what do you do? You get a review and consultation, but let me stop there for a second. Remember again, the company says, and this is the killer Trump card line. You signed the agreement and we're allowed to do it under the agreement and we're going to do it. When I get back, we're going to talk about the other street, the one that goes the other direction when the company isn't allowed to do it. And let's see how they behave then. How kind are they then? I'm going to tell you, you're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me right here each and every week on this station at this time. 
Give us a call. Learn about our services. Learn about reviews, consultations. I don't care where you're located as long as it's Pennsylvania property. 570-307-0702. Check out the websites, pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com. Today's show will be up and available tomorrow morning. And there are many other hours of shows on the websites. Check them out. Not specific information or specific advice, but great information. Check out pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com, and stay tuned because we're going to see how does the company handle it if they don't have the rights. We'll dive into that the next section. And stay tuned to this very important message. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. You can always call the office, 570-307-0702. All oil and gas representation, regardless of where you are. And again, too many people are not exploring the websites because I'll talk to people and I say, well, did you check out the website or did you check out any other shows? And they, they're not aware of it. So I want to make sure people are aware of the two websites, pagasleaseattorney.com and pipelineattorney.com. The prior radio shows and this week's shows will be up tomorrow, Monday, but the prior shows are up and available on the websites for, I think, the last couple years. So you can go find a show on whatever topic you're interested in. So really encourage you to listen. Not specific advice. The specific advice is to get specific advice, but great to get you thinking and informed. Okay, let's talk about it. So here we go. We talked about when the company has the rights under an agreement. People just sign these agreements because the landman says, well, here's all we're going to do. They sign the agreement. Then all of a sudden, something totally different happens. And I'm going to tell you, how do I know this occurs? Because I get these calls frequently. I was told this and something totally different happened. And I've had communications with the companies and I've had communications with those particular landowners. And the end result is almost always the landowner signed the agreement. This is the company talking. The landowner signed the agreement. Well, they could have went to you beforehand and learned their rights and limited it, but they signed it and we have the rights. And we've been using the example. It may be for multiple pipelines, even though you thought there was only one. It may be the right to install a roadway on the property to get to an above ground facility that they've installed on the property that you didn't think that was ever going to happen. And that's the type of just a small type of an example. And then they can put in multiple lines at different times. So your property really gets dug up and tore up. And you say, well, I didn't think they could do that. The landman told me and the company says, well, too bad. Uh, you signed the agreement and we have the rights under the agreement. Well, how about this? How about if I signed an agreement that limited the number of pipelines to one pipeline? Then the company comes back and they want to install a second pipeline. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have the ability to negotiate for the second pipeline. And you have the ability to say no, no. So the company doesn't have the rights. So what do they do? They start, you know, in my, my opinion, they start begging. They start saying, well, well, you know, we want to get the other people money. Oh, we want to do this. We want to do that. We want to get other people royalties. And, you know, we want to help everybody out. And you should help everybody out. And you should go ahead and agree. And we're offering you $15 a foot. Maybe they're offering 30 I don't think either one of those two matter. So they're offering 15 which is, to me, again, crazy. But they're offering $15 a foot, let's say. But I don't want that. If it's 30 I still it's the same evaluation here. So you say, well, I don't care. I'm pretty happy with the way things are, and I don't want my property dug up again. Company, again, starts whining and crying. Here's the thing that kills me. This is what kills me. Well, even if you are going to benefit, even if you are going to benefit, the companies love to say, this project is going to benefit you because it's going to give us the ability maybe to get your gas to various markets, which <laughs> if you're in Tioga County or in many others, that's a garbage argument because they're using the index price anyway, most likely. So be very careful of that. And those are the things. It's real easy to say, oh, well, this allows us to get the gas to multiple markets and achieve a higher gas price. Well, what the heck 
Does that matter if you're paying me on an index price locally in a way to suppress my royalties? Again, my opinion, but you know that very well could be occurring. So I don't care that you're getting the benefit of a higher price to sell gas when you're giving me a local index price. How in the heck, and boy, I want to talk differently, but how in the heck does that give me some great benefit? In fact, it gives you company great benefit because you can sell the gas at multiple outlets at higher values and attain more profit. Well, in my example, you're simultaneously paying me a local index price, which I get no better benefit from this gas going to a distant market. So, yeah, it benefits you, but does it really benefit me? You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station. Also, 570-307-0702. Give us a call. See if we can help you. All right. I, get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. Let's get back to it. Better example. Better example. Landowner negotiates a right-of-way agreement that allows for a water line, but the water line can only transport fresh water. The water line specifically does not authorize and actually precludes the transportation of flowback water, produced water, what many people may call fracking fluids, fracking water, brine water, salt water. Only fresh water can go through the line. This was an important term that this landowner property owner negotiated. Now we fast forward and the company comes back and they want to amend the right-of-way agreement. Real quick, amendment ratifications. Pick up the phone, put down the pen. Company comes back, they want to amend the right-of-way agreement that this person had negotiated through their counsel, we'll say in this example. They negotiated to say fresh water only. Now they want to amend it to allow any type of water under the sun. Very general amendment, couple sentences as far as substance goes. It says we're going to delete the restriction of fresh water only and allow any type of water that we want in the world to go through this through this pipeline. Well, without even getting into the potential problems if there's a leak with a line like that, without even getting into the concerns that you would have, without even getting too deep into the fact that you negotiated, maybe through counsel, to have a water line that could not transport fracking fluids produced or flow back water, Without even getting into the fact that you got the agreement you wanted before, and now for a couple thousand, maybe a few thousand dollars, not a lot, they want to change it to totally undo everything that you had worked for. And what do they say? Well, landowner, if you don't sign, you're a bad person. You're a bad person because by signing, we can then take water that we use in the fracking activities and transport it from the well site off that property and to a distant place where we can uh, we can process it and treat it. So we don't have to use as many trucks to take the water from the well site to a treatment facility. So you, if you don't sign bad, bad, bad landowner, you're gonna force us, poor us company, are gonna have to truck all of this water and it's going to tear up your local roads. There could be people that have, that there, God forbid, there could be accidents with these trucks. And it's going to cause slow traffic and all the other negatives that go along with these heavy trucks on the roadways. And so they offer you a few thousand dollars to change to allow this frac fluid to flow through your pipeline. Now, remember, many people have signed these water line agreements allows any type of water in the world to go through their pipeline to begin with. And they may have been told, I'm not saying they were, but they may have been told we're not going to transport fracking fluids or produced or flow back water through the line. It'll just be fresh water. But if that's not in the agreement, well, they're allowed to do it. And so they originally said, we don't intend, we're only going to use fresh water. We're not going to do anything but fresh water. Now you fast forward five years and they say, no, no, no. Now we're going to start transporting the flow back, the produced and frack water back through the pipelines. So Lanner says, wait a second, wait a second. 
wait, wait, wait. The landman told me you weren't going to do that. The landman told me you weren't going to do it. And now you're doing it. And again, it falls into that whole circle of company says, well, you signed a contract. The contract allows it. You didn't have a lawyer. You could have got a lawyer. You elected not to get one. Live by the contract too bad. But in our case, in the case of my example I'm talking about, the landowner did negotiate. In my example, we'll say the landowner did get a lawyer. And the landowner limited to fresh water only. And now, company, you can't do this unless we give you permission, which you can deny, which the landowner can deny or negotiate. And I'll tell you what. In my hypothetical here, the landowner is not going to agree to a few thousand dollars to allow produced flow back and fracking water to flow across their property. Not going to happen. So the person understands the rights and is going to negotiate or say no or say no. Because here we are now as the landowner, some of the company, you signed the contract. You agreed to it. I'm not the bad guy. You agreed to fresh water. And now you want to make me the bad guy. That's crazy. I'm up against it here. We got one more segment. It's going to be short. And we're going to have fun in this last one because this is outrageous. You're the bad guy. No, 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 no. We can't let that happen. And that cannot be the mentality that people have. I'll explain what I mean in the next segment. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark from the Clark Law Firm. You join me each and every week. At this time on this station, give the office a call for representation information, 570-307-0702. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can call me, call the office, learn about reviews, consultations, all services at 570-307-0702, 570-307-0702. As always, we got a short final segment, so let's jump into it. So here's the deal real quick. Landowner, we'll stick with this example. This is an example, hypothetical, um, hypothetical based on a true story. Landowner has a negotiated pipeline right-of-way agreement that does not allow for anything but fresh water to be transported in the water line. Company now comes back to the landowner and wants to amend, please everybody, amend, ratify, keywords, get help, amend, ratify. You need to be talking to somebody that is going to help you, not the company. So they want to amend your right-of-way agreement to allow produced flow back and what some people call fracking water that after the fracking process now would transport through your water pipeline across your property. Some people have concerns that a leak occurs, what that can do to their water aquifer and pollution and worst case scenario, literally destroy their property and the value of their house that may mean a lot to them. So some people, if the risk is 0.1%, don't want to take it. So they say in the beginning, okay, I'll agree to this, but it has to be fresh water only. So company agrees to it. Now they come back five years later and say, oh, we want to amend to delete that requirement of only fresh water and allow us to transport any type of water, not even just produced and flow back, but just any substance through that pipeline. So then you say, well, I don't want to do that. And then the company says, well, because of you, now we will have to run trucks. We'll have to carry this water in trucks, which means more traffic, which means potential of accidents, liability, God forbid an accident on the road with the trucks, tearing up the roadways and on and on and on. So the company says, hey, we need to cut down on this truck traffic. It's going to be great for the community. It's going to be great for you. It's going to be great for everybody. And you say, well, geez, I don't want a fracking fluids produced in flow back water to be transported across my property. And if I do want it, if I'm willing to take that potential risk, it's going to take a lot more money than a few thousand dollars. It's going to also require liquidated damages provisions in the event there's an accident that I'm covered. All kinds of different protection items that are going to need to be in this agreement if I'm going to agree to it. If I'm going to agree to it. I negotiated my original contract so this would never occur. Now the shoe is on the other foot. Now it's a two-way street. You company. You don't have the authority. So, hey, company, you signed the agreement. 
you could have had a lawyer, which you did, and you signed the agreement, and now you're coming back to make me feel guilty, and I'm a bad person because I don't want produced or flow back water across my property, and I'm a bad guy? That's my fault? Well, no, you agreed to the agreement. And I'll tell you, maybe, maybe, maybe there's never an agreement because you don't want it, and that's fine, and that's your right. You don't have to agree. You don't have to. Or maybe, if you're going to agree, the cost for you to agree is not going to be a few thousand, but it may be a few hundred thousand. And here's the thing, and this, is, again, gets back to what kills me. What kills me? These companies, these companies act like, you're the bad guy because you don't want to do it and you're the bad guy because you don't want to do it for a few thousand dollars which is again to my, my opinion as strong as i can offer it a total joke you're the bad guy you're made to feel the bad guy that you don't want to have produced and flow back water going across your property and the company makes you feel guilty makes you feel bad makes you feel that you're going to be responsible for all of this truck traffic well they're simultaneously offering you pittance virtually no money to take on this risk which is a risk no matter what they say it's a risk because one of the things they'll say is oh we'll indemnify you we'll protect you well no what if you say well we didn't cause it now i'm in a court fight of my life because you ruined my water aquifer or you may say listen i don't like this i recognize that it's a relatively safe endeavor but any problem is disastrous like, that's the thing. Any problem is disastrous. People don't jump out of airplanes because they're afraid the chute might not open. Well, usually the chute opens at a very, very high percentage of time. Well, usually there's no water spills, no leaks. But if it's a leak on your property, well, now you got a monstrous problem. So what do you do? You say, listen, if I were to take this risk, it's going to require a whole lot more money, so in the event there's a problem, I can try to fix it, I can maybe move, I can bring a lawsuit against you to fix it, whatever that case may be. But I sure as heck am not going to agree for a few thousand dollars. Oh, also, and not even for tens of thousands, but to offer me a few thousand, that's insane. Then from there, then from there, and this is the thing I could say, I'll get to it, that kills me, is the amount of money that that company is going to make by transporting this water through pipelines that are already in place and not trucking. Think about the cost of gas, the cost of the workers, the liability for the trucking in case there's accidents, all of those different things. They are going to save a boat, 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 boat load, aircraft carrier loads of money. And they're going to offer you a few thousand dollars, which again, I don't care if they were even offering you tens of thousands. They offer you a joke and then make you feel guilty because of something you negotiated that they agreed to. And now you should feel guilty. But if you, they had the right, that's all they'd talk about. You signed it. You signed the agreement. You could have had an attorney. You didn't have to agree to it. You agreed to it. Well, you know what company? It's a two-way street. You signed an agreement. You agreed to it. And if you want to move away from that agreement and amend it, everybody, amendment ratification, if you want to do that, well, you're going to have to either negotiate or I'm going to say no. And that's the deal we made, and we're all going to live by it. All right, I'm up against it. You're listening to All Things Marcellus. Join me each and every week at this time on this station multi-unit wells shut in for eight years or more and any other matter i want to hear from you 570-307-0702 remember the land man works for the company not you the landowner put down the pen pick up the phone give us a call and let's stop signing bad agreements and most importantly have a wonderful wonderful week everyone